Did it go live? <laughs> Waiting for my laptop to catch up. Yep. <laughs> Good morning. Wait, afternoon. <laughs> um, when you're have a second. I don't know if I turned my phone off. It's on that. It's on that table. Yes. I just, I'll just, I'll just turn the volume off. Thank you. I'm, I'm all weirded out because the chat is in a different place. Is the chat in a different place for you guys? It's like underneath instead of next to. Oh, I gotta turn my volume off. They say it's okay. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> so you have Talbot and I today. Um, yay! <laughs> and uh, and a lot of pieces of thing that are going to become something. I just gotta figure out how. There we go. I always get confused. So Talbot's gonna um, be keeping an eye on our chat. Let me know what I need to mention. And I have two projects in front of me and I'm gonna start with this, um, this natural sort of log one and the oyster mushroom setup. And then um, I also have a mirror <laughs> and some little sort of um, trumpet mushrooms that I can jump to if, if I get this finished rather quickly. But Once I get all the pieces ready, it doesn't take long. And I did have all my other mushrooms ready, but since we didn't do the oyster mushroom on the mushroom tutorial, the actual construction, I thought I would show that, how I do that. Okay. So an odd number is nice and five is like just manageable. So kind of look for the biggest ones towards the top. And then these three maybe. I'm gonna grab this brush. And then the smaller ones towards the bottom. And then I want them to come onto my armature and then sort of like twist over. <laughs> so once I have this built, I'm gonna just start um, gluing, basically, using the power pole, putting all my components together. I saved, when I made these wet felted pieces, I saved a little bit of the fiber so that I can needle felt it on. Anybody have any questions? <laughs> uh, well, Trisha Scott was wondering if you're feeling all right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. I was out for a week. I feel great. Thank you. And Diane Baven says your hair looks great. Oh, thank you. I'm just, I just keep going shorter and shorter. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to have a buzz cut. Uh, 
overhead camera at some point? Yeah, we can we can have both. We can have both on. My my introduction was um, <laughs> very very weak today. Just jumped right into it. I just want to get somewhere with this so that you guys can have the visual. Okay. So once I get this made. I'm trying to get these to spill kind of outwards and then, um, thanks Talbot. And then it's going to go on to this log, which you can still see in the overhead. And then I have a few more pieces. I was going to do like three kind of coming out of this little hole. And then I picked out some feathers and I made these, I pre-made these because they just take a long time, some little plumes using the um, plumage technique. And I have some locks here. So I sort of, I tried to sort of pull together basically like a color, a color scheme. And I'll show you a few different ways that you can start to stick stuff together and things you might want to consider when you do. That's the goal today. Michelle As... Helen was wondering uh, how we find the wood. Oh, this I found at a resale shop. So I, just start keeping your eyes peeled when you're out and about. Um, some I, There's a lot of, this is almost like decorative. Like it has a little stand on it. So I think it was made for display, like some kind of display. Um, driftwood is great because it's already sort of all interesting and worn and um, generally not mushy, like something that you might, um, you know, find. But I, I've, some of my favorite mushroom ones were on the frames or I love this little one that's in the, um, in the drawer, <laughs> little um, needle holder seems like a good excuse to go to antique shops. Yeah, definitely. Don't need an excuse, but it does make it more fun when you have something you're hunting for. So it's a beautiful day here. Um, we had kind of, a, I'd say it's rained for about four days. Yes. Yeah, and now the sun is out. It's lovely. We had a moon. It wasn't last night. It was the night before. Um, not sure how the moon works or where else people see it. But the moon was gigantic in the sky, but it was just like this perfect sliver, and it was orange. It was glowing. It was so pretty. Why do I have six of these? Hmm. I don't have an answer. I know, I don't usually make six of something. Kyla is at a uh, soccer game, very important soccer game. We put some fun stuff in um, boodles and a couple of things on sale. Put the Imprimatura on sale, 25% off until November 15th. So if that's something you've been thinking about trying, it's a great time to try it. And it's big enough that if you're doing, if you're using it for 2D needle felting, like you know, little portraits, it's it could be two or four, one, two or four, um, depending on how big you're going. And then um, a silk, silk is 25% off. And I'm gonna talk to Kyla and see if we can sort it out. I was a little, it doesn't show up as on sale until you put it into your cart, which is a little strange to me. But like I said in my post, we're still getting to know the website and figure out how to utilize it. 
to the best degree. Ow, I stabbed myself. So I've got these attached to each sort of arm that I made. And now I want to, a little kind of staggered, and now I want to um, cover the, the off-white center of it. And I have a reference picture. Yeah, they just kind of like, well, they do all different things, but Okay. Will you be finishing off those oyster mushrooms so the uh, core wool isn't showing? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do now, and that's why I saved a little bit of this color. So just take some fringe, lay it over the core wool, and I try not to, I try to do a minimal amount because the more you stab the wet felted area, kind of the, the more it messes it up. So I try to do not so much stabbing and it's a little fussy. here try to make it seamless and look like just one flowing thing and then I can try to stab that dish shape into it And you might want your little clicker because I'm stabbing back into the pretty wet felted part and it's making all this fuzz. And um, the clicker can, can take that that fuzz away. Yeah, looks pretty good. Oh, Patty Clark is bringing up how Imprimature is not showing up as discounted. Right. But it should once it's in the cart. Yep, that's exactly what I was just saying. It's, um, I don't know why it's doing that way. <laughs> But when it, when you put it in your cart, you'll see that it uh, comes in at um, 24 instead of 32. Okay. I don't know, you guys can't see what I'm doing. I can't see what I'm doing. These are a problem. These um, soft grays are such a pleasing color to me. I didn't do this one as blue as other times. And then these I did more gold. Actually, I put gold in these from the um, gold mix that I made using the silver and gold boodle. It's like super shiny, a lot of silk.
Sherry Williams was wondering what gauge wire you used for the oyster mushrooms. I used 22. So, and I show this armature in the mushroom tutorial. We just didn't finish the whole mushroom out, but I showed how to make and wrap the armature. Mostly all the mushrooms I used 22. In the beginning, I experimented with 14 gauge um, aluminum wire, but I didn't, it, it, it didn't need it. All right, two down, three to go. Giving this a little bit more of like a non-directional kind of fuzz. So I have definitely um, power pole, power tax is the way that I'm getting everything to stick. So I have that ready. A little bit of power wax is handy when I when I made these tiny um, little fronds. I twisted the fiber on and just took some power wax and <laughs> used that to hold everything into place. Uh, Sherilyn is asking what fiber was used on those oyster mushrooms, like what color? And mm, yeah, I don't know if you went over that in the tutorial already in the tutorial i mixed i used um blue moon bat and i i love that color that's kind of the color i was going for but it was a little bit wiry for the oyster mushroom i wanted more silk this i do not remember what is in it exactly it has a gray it probably has nut it has some tussa silk almost looks um, like a sage yeah it doesn't it doesn't have green in it if it looks it it's because of um using like cooler blue grays with golden colors and that kind of creates that um that taupey tone i did these this past week in preparation for today like i wanted to make another set um and i did not write down exactly what I did. But when when wet felting these caps, definitely more merino and silk than, you know, core or even top coat. Makes a really nice smooth smooth finish. Thank you everyone for your help with the um, voting on the blanket name. Um, definitely helped a lot to hone in on what uh, what you guys think sounds good and why. Were there any front runners? Um, sorry, sorry, Bella is, mm -hmm. and I. What I like about that is you could say it, Sarah Bella. <laughs> Like if, you know what I mean? Like, cause it's S-A-R-I. Right. Um, so maybe not knowing the S-A-R-I comes from the saris that I'm using. And um, and I like that it mimics Serafina in the number of, like in the flow of it and the number of syllables. And um, just kind of fits well, kind of hits all the marks should be original enough and um
It uh, kind of reminds me of cerebellum. Oh, what's that? Isn't it's that your brain? Part of your brain <laughs> that uh, can maintain balance, mm -hmm. equilibrium. Mm -hmm. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, the word, you know, the name is meant to just have like kind of like a vibe to it and a connotation and that needs to be pretty and you know relatively easy to say the meaning the meaning is hidden i'm not i'm not one for like descriptive names um so the meaning behind these made up words that i that i you know shared as options i realized that the meanings were hidden and, and that's okay um Taking too long, coming together. I think what I love about this project is it, it pulls together so many components to um, it, that's really fun to me, kind of like nests. You've got your found objects and then your wet felting and your needle felting and your little locks and it's really fun. Okay, just wanna get this one a little more shaped a little bit better. Any questions? Are you guys working or just watching? What's everybody doing this morning, this afternoon? I keep, why do I keep thinking it's morning? <laughs> uh, I would say spirits are high. Good. <laughs> That's good. Uh, definitely seems like there's like viewers, there's people that are just, you know, watching it now, but they're going to work on it later. Yeah. Which is a bit easier. Yes, I think so too. It's more fun just to... Do one thing at a time. <laughs> um, another thing that you can do before you start actually building is needle felt a little bit of floor, like a little bit of pieces of texture. So for example, Oh, I made these little bobbles out of um, velvet ribbon. I mean, that's what's so fun about it. Like yarn, anything can become a part of this. All right, let me set those aside. So I have this texture um, that I made. I don't know what to do with this dude. I'm just gonna leave that. And I have this one. I'm not exactly sure which one I'm gonna use primarily. The gold's a little, it's pretty gold, but maybe a few little pieces of it. I'll, I'll, stick, with the, I'll stick with the more neutral one. And then I can take a piece, like if I know I wanna have kind of a, a piece draping here, I can cut a piece out. and then see how it goes on. Like, okay, am I happy with that? It's kind of cool. And then you can start to decide, do I want a little something coming out of there? Like if I wanted one of these, I can either poke the wire through and have it on the bottom
or whoops I got one through and not the other one all right well it's going to be a half and half all right so I have one wire through on the bottom and that can just live there and I have another wire on top on which I can just felt a little bit of wool to hold it and cover it so you can build you could if you're going to do a little bit of needle felting now is the time to do it because once you start gluing then you can't needle felt into your frame or your box or your piece of wood um it it gets you know you can't stab so making a little bit of something going on is is a fun thing to do i could take a lock i can put some locks on i tried to pick things that color coordinate So that sort of no matter what I pick, it's all going together. I'm gonna use the locks on the edge to like start to eliminate that cut edge look. Um, Neps work really well for that as well. Uh, people are asking what type of glue you're using. We're gonna use, uh, mine's old, so it's powerful, but you might have power text. Um, if you had yarn, you could make a little tuft mine I have a little bit right into my um, I have a little bit right into my wet felting but I could take a piece of yarn I'm just showing you guys various <laughs> various things you can do and then Cut it, stab it. Put a little lock on it. <laughs> I feel like the up close, like forest floor pictures are kind of like looking at coral like so much amazing stuff is happening when you start inspecting all right so that's a good little bit that i will drape somewhere and then i'm going to do another one maybe with That'll go over here. Maybe I'll do three. If you have like neppy bumps, that's a good kind of thing to weave around when you cut because it looks a little more natural than a straight cut. This one, I think I'll put both, both of these little doodads on it. I don't have a plan. I'm just stabbing and then I'll make a plan. Maybe I'll keep this one a little more streamlined.
we filmed um, we filmed the entire female figure tutorial. Talbot has a huge editing job ahead of him because I was a little bit all over the place. <laughs> but uh, the course is being designed and um, the reference material is ready. So it's just a going to be a bit of us, you know, sort of pulling it all together for a proper presentation. These fronds are a little bit Dr. Seuss. But that's okay. I've got um, onion colors and neps in here, which are really fun. I like that little pop of purple and in my other color palette for my other project I have some richer colors which I might decide to put a little bit in here um, but I kept this I was keeping this one a little more neutral Really like sagey, very sagey greens. This was all from a um, fiber art bundle that didn't work. Mm. <laughs> so there's like all this um, merino and mohair. Yeah, nothing goes to waste. Yeah, no, that's cool. We can use everything. So that will go somewhere on here. And then I think this will kind of like pull up out of here. And then these will be over here. I don't know if I need to make, I probably should make a quick little armature for these guys. I thought maybe I could just shove them in there. Eh, I probably could just shove them in there. Well, let me get, let me do it right. <laughs> oh no, I have to really move. Okay, I'm sorry. What are they saying over there? Uh, just wondering about the different waxes or like the, mm. the cold wax. Yeah. Also the female figure course. Yeah. How it's going to be on the annex. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it's just too big for a free tutorial. Right. Yes. That is definitely a um, an annex tutorial. Just giving myself a little support for this second set of mushrooms that I want to put on here. Um, I'm excited, and the next thing that I'm really like pushing on is um, the commission webinar. So I'm looking forward to that. I have a ton to share, um, ton to talk about. So it will be, it will look like a Zoom meeting, um, but just if, depending on how many people, we will not have 
you know, everyone on video, like, like it'll just be me on video, mostly a, um, a discussion, but it's coming in the form of an annex course. So the, the webinar portion is just a part of it. There's all these other sort of supplemental materials that will be in the course. Um, so that you can con like reference that over and over again without having to, you know, rewatch the video or, um, and yeah, this is the first time I'm, I'm doing it. So hopefully it goes well. I did a couple of small, you know, things during, um, during COVID of, um, like, fiber types and armatures and I think I did a I might have done a pricing one. I am gonna talk about pricing in the um sorry, I didn't have my pliers, so I used my teeth. Um in the commission one. Um so it was linked in the newsletter. It is I'm not sure if it got onto the website yet, like into the annex or did we talk about the price? Um it's forty eight dollars. And it is available to you as a part of your learning library in the annex, like forever. So, um, and the uh, should anything arise where you couldn't make the meeting, that recording is there also. But it is a live uh, live event, and it'll be similar to this with a chat, so that it, if there are questions, then I can. I can answer them, but the questions will come in a chat rather than verbally, just because um, it might get too too busy that way. But all right, just get these on here, just like I did the other ones. And what was the date and time going to be? That is in the evening, seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it was a. Thursday, <laughs> it's November, it's either the 7th or the 10th, somewhere, the 9th. <laughs> uh, yeah, let, me, let me go. Okay, Talbot's going to let us know. Yeah, November the 10th. November the 10th. I got to find the golden parts of this um, mix because this these are definitely more gold. So yeah, so we'll talk about, is it right for you? Um, I mean, hopefully it is, and that's why <laughs> you would be tuning in. Um, but sort of, you know, the different kinds of things to consider. Um, then the process, start to finish, um, how that looks, a commission agreement, um, what, what things are really important to keep in mind to have success and have good experiences and good outcome. And... Examples, I'm gonna try and dig out. I do have a graveyard. Um, I'll try to dig out some some good examples and some bad. Some, I did not often have things go wrong, which is why I did so many and, and, and I did really like it. So that's good. So this, this project, you have to be a little bit, a little bit bold, kind of go for it. I love the gluing, like I don't often glue. <laughs> so it feels very, it's very liberating just to be like, stick some glue and stick it on there. Do you want a chair? No, it's it's good. 
good to stand. <laughs> okay. You guys have Talbot. You should grill him. <laughs> uh oh, I think I put that on upside down. Oh well, no one will know. I think we'll all know. <laughs> Wait, everybody knows. <laughs> Crap. Don't. Oh, I just saw it did something cool by mistake. I had a little piece of green on here by mistake, and then it made me decide I want to stab some texture into this. Sometimes mushrooms get like some dirt and stuff. From their emergence, it's like still stuck on them. You guys can be way more particular than I'm being right now. So what else am I excited for? I'm excited for to share the course with you. I'm excited for the webinar. Um, I'm excited to get the blankets publicly launched. Um, it's a long, a big process. We're gonna have some new fiber. Um, should arrive, fingers crossed, early week. Will take us a little bit to get it all bundled and listed and photographed and listed and all that, but um, that'll be that'll be fun. better that has some good structure I can bend them around and make them look great uh, Jan Scott was wondering about the fiber you added mm-hmm this this just to blend it this stuff um. this was like I kept some when I wet felted I kept some so that when it comes to construction, I could, you know, more easily have that blend to put it together. Hopefully that's the fabric yeah. you're referring to. Yeah, <laughs> she'll mention it again. The new stuff. Oh, the new, the stuff that we're gonna sell? That I just mentioned? What's what it to read me what she said? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the new unnamed fiber. Like the new unnamed fiber. What I just talked about that we're gonna have. 
I assume. <laughs> it's core. It's a. It's like a. We're trying to get something in to. Um, you know, to replace some of the core that we haven't been able to get. Yeah. So that hopefully that's what you're talking about. But just rephrase the question if I didn't didn't nail it. Okay. So I have this little thing, and that will. This has a little hole. I can just tuck that in there. You want to be sure your pieces are you're happy with them before you glue them because once they're glued, you cannot really work on them. So get them, get them kind of looking <laughs> mostly the way you want them to. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna swing this around more because I don't have a ton of space down in here. I want it to be pretty pretty tight down in there. Ooh, that's good. I don't even need to glue it. Just stuck there. Okay, so now I have some things needle felted. I have some things um, built, and I'm going to start putting it together. Deborah Paul is asking if we're going to have a tutorial on drop spindle. Yes. Oh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I just, um, I wanted, you know, I wanted to do the drop spindle and the blending board together. And the blending board has been on back order forever. So as soon as we get that, um, I could do a little live just showing, if you're just learning, getting the feel of it with something like the one of the 40 top coat colors is perfect because that roving is on the thinner side. So it's almost like it's already draft, you know, drafted for you. And you can just start to get the feel of keeping the spindle going while you're keeping the twist and um, working the fiber. So yes, the answer is yes. And I'm really looking forward to that. Okay. So here's my, I have to work with it facing me. I know you guys, the overhead is a little, um, tough to see, you know, what I'm seeing, but I want my composition to, Hmm. I'm just moving stuff around. Again. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I want to make a composition that makes sense. I kind of want the mushrooms looking like they're coming up out of the wood. And then I can decide if I really want it asymmetrical, I could put both sets of mushrooms on one side, which I tend to like things that are more, um, more asymmetrical and then I can have a little bit of some kind of texture over here. You know, something like that. And then maybe just a tiny bit over here. So a more symmetrical would be to have this on this side and have mushrooms on both sides. Do you have a preference? I would agree with the asymmetric. I think so too. Like that's a little mushroom family over here. Now, if I want this here, I am going to add another wire. Um, Cause I just, I really want it to be able to grab on. And unfortunately my shortest wire is at the top and I, I really want it to be able to go right around glue would be enough if I had a way to like hold, like clamp it on there while I'm waiting. But, um, and I also, I can take a wire, stick it on there. And then if I don't want to have to cover the wire all the way around, I can cover it right here. And then once it's all glued, then just clip the back wire off. I think that's what I'll do. I really should have had some wires on hand. 
I mean, I could always get you some. I know. I'm just making a mess. These were the um, oyster mushroom colors that I made in the mushroom tutorial, more blue. And I just, I didn't have enough silk in them, so they weren't as successful to me. I love the color, but I would have mixed more silk in there. Okay. Does yours look like this with the chat down here? Uh, no, you might be in theater mode. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Which you can, it's a, the box next to the full screen, I think, or the left. There we go. That's more better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take this. Wrap it together with one that's here and with this one. Now, when I put this on here, it will be very secure. And like I said, if I decide I don't want this wire going around this whole log, once I get this glued, um, I can open this up and trim this wire off. So I'm going to kind of use that as a holder. And so I'm going to go ahead and put some glue. My glue situation is not pretty. I'm going to tell you right now because I'm using like this old thing and it just has a stick in it and it makes a great big mess. And I'm probably going to end up asking you for a wet paper towel at some point sure. because it helps me like, uh, And I have to like squeeze the heck out of it. Probably should have gotten, I could have treated myself to a new power tax. There we go. This is what I meant by you kind of just have to go for it and trust that everything's going to work out. And once you get it anchored on there, could you tilt it so overhead can see? Yeah. Yeah. So I have it just stuck on there and I will use little pieces of my, you know, blocks and texture to cover, um, cover the wires and the glue, but I wanted this set to kind of look like it's emerging um, from the side of the wood. And then this one, I'm just gonna put glue right on the end here and shove that, <laughs> shove that right in there. And the pieces that I've made with this, um, they're great, it works really well. Powertex is pretty, pretty amazing stuff. And like I said, you want you want to be happy with your um, with your mushrooms as they are, because I will not be able to go back and needle felt these. All right, now we just get to play with these components. Ooh, Diane uh, has a suggestion that she did. Okay. Her she used a. Uh a small drill and used it to put a hole through so she could put the wire through. Just stick the wire right. That's brilliant. Oh, that looks like a little leaf. I might keep that. Yes, that's that's a great idea. So this is a little too kind of cut looking, um, but once I get it on, I will play with it. So my options are to needle felt a lock on there, kind of like I did over here, um, but once it's glued on, I can just add, I can add some neps 
Oh, I like the way I've got a lock kind of dangling over here. I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of this. I don't like this end area, I don't need it. And I want what I'm building to make sense on the piece, like sort of follow the nooks and crannies and um, make sense in a very nonsensical, haphazard kind of way. Can you uh, tease the edges out? You can, you so can. So it looks a bit like softer. Yeah, you could tease the edges out. You can add locks. I'm gonna be adding, um, I'm gonna be adding like neps to make a little more mossy, kind of dribbly sort of look. Now, do I want that up there? Or do I want that wood just to be wood? And then have this over here. Oh, I think I like that better. Just have this be, maybe I'll put like a little something there. Tab was like, why do you keep looking at me? I don't know what you're doing, woman. <laughs> you definitely show off the, uh... well, there was another request to see the pin cushion okay up close yes we can look take a look at that okay it also has you know yeah this all feels like it's a little hard to see i this technique i really like um maybe i can show it i just took core wool and i made like a big log on the zoli tool and then i took hand spun and some of that mohair yarn and wrapped it around it really tightly and it just very it made a really like natural looking yarn log <laughs> so sometimes the more the looser you can be and the more you can just let the fiber do the work i feel like the more success in this medium like if i were to try to like needle felt a log it would look dumb and take forever but using the texture of the yarn and the linear, you know, nature of the yarn um, worked pretty well. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with this. Oh, it's like it's so hard to see. Well, it's upside down too, right? <laughs> I'm looking at it upside down. You can see it. Okay. Okay. Okay, let me look. Oh, I, should need, I need to look on here. Here's what I need to yeah. look on. There we go. Okay. Uh-oh. Am I stuck on yours? Nope. No frames dropped. Okay. You I'm just might need to refresh. Refresh. There we go. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's, I mean, it's not that hard. That's, it's really getting everything ready is the, is the tricky part. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. I love the, I love the drill idea. I like the way I threw this on there and I like the way that lock's hanging down and this grass is going there and that grass is going there. So I'm going to go ahead and secure that. And I'm gonna do that by putting a bunch of glue on it. <laughs> I'm sticking her on. So now I have the majority of my wire covered. I have a frond, I have some grass. I'm gonna stick this in here. Mm, I'm gonna stick a lock to it. Mm. 
I don't know what these locks are, like Wensleydale lamb or something. It's like super, super soft. Let's do this. And I mean, this doesn't make any sense, and I don't know what it's trying to be, but it shows off the locks, and there was some glue already in that hole, so I just shoved that in the hole with the... Oh, it could be moss. Yeah, it is. It's just <laughs> whatever. It's whatever. I can go over there. And then I'm going to do this one. Every one I make, I'm like, this is my favorite one. This piece of wood, I don't know if you guys can see it. It has a rock coming out of the back of it. Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? Notice. Yeah. So I don't want to cover that up. I want that. I'm happy to like leave the hole. You know what I mean? Like leave this. Not cover the whole thing up. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Jan Scott was wondering if the rock was part of a base, but I think it is just it's like grown around it. Yeah, it must have grown around it. It's a really interesting piece of wood. Let me turn it towards the front and see if you guys can see it better this way. Lara Dickus was um, saying you could use the power text on art yarn to make like worms oh fun yeah 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 like yeah i could see the power wax working too because then you could keep them bendy power text turns everything into a rock so i have some other things um forest floor things acorns tiny little pine cones a few feathers i don't know if they add they add to it or not um these i liked these golden feathers because it kind of matches the color of these mushrooms so i might stick a few on there but they don't have to be glued or anything i can decorate it and undecorate it so now i'm just gonna take some um neps and blend away a few places that are a little too cut looking and I think that's easier to do with well I can try just putting a dollop but it might be easier to do with a stick with a little skewer Just a little bit right here. Oh, that was a lot. I didn't mean to put that much. Got to put some naps there. Uh, at this point, can you tilt it, or is stuff not? Yeah, I can tilt it. They just want to see. Uh... Yeah, it is really hard to see from the top. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Do you need any wet towels? <laughs> I'm doing okay so far. Okay. Jeez, my thing won't catch up. Maybe I'm behind. Oh, it's it's always going to be. I know. Bit, bit. I feel like it's really behind. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. There. Okay. I was just making sure, like, it, to it, see what you guys see. It is a bit behind. Yeah, it's very behind. Alrighty. And then over here, I think I can let this go. Do you need? Uh, I need these? pliers and yes, thank you. All right, I'm gonna leave that one there and glue it down. And glue something on top of it. And then this one I can tuck under quite a bit. So I'm gonna cut this one here and I can tuck it under this um, piece of felt and glue it. That gives me um, a good bit more grab. Kind of permanent grab. Sometimes, like when I did the box, when I was getting the mushrooms onto the side of the needle holder, I needed to put a rubber band around something that just until it held firmly. I mean, I love with the armature, you can, you know, you can move things around and get them just how you want them. Ooh, have you ever made a dragonfly? No, that would be really fun. That'd be cool. We did butterflies long ago, and I feel like we could do them better now. And I think with a dragonfly, using the plumage technique and then pulling all the fiber in one direction instead of spreading it out like a feather, that could really, it could give you that, if you used a thin wire, it could give you a really thin wire edge and then like a really thin, even wing. Or maybe even wing. Like cold wax and just really yeah. press it. Yeah, a little cold wax. Um, would be really pretty. I prefer the fiber approach to, you know, the plastic, the the things they can that those things can look very much like wings, but um, I don't like that. I like I like the challenge of doing things out of fiber. I guess um, sort of that's the whole point to me. So as you can see, once you have your pieces, <laughs> it really doesn't uh, doesn't take very long to um, to put something together. It's it's the it's all the preparation of all the stuff that that takes longer. What do you guys think? Should I do the mirror one? I mean, I might mess with this some more, but I feel like that is a really good start for that one. It's two two eleven. I could do another one. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you could hold up the mirror and then also whatever other other object, and I could do a pole. Okay. Okay. So the mirror one. I just gotta figure out how to do that. Okay. I'll just put it in the overhead first because it's hard to hold. I have everything ready. I have a little bit more of like a rich color palette. This the this one is very muted. And I was gonna do oh and I picked out some really pretty feathers. This one's a little like bougie, is that the right word? It's very like it's gonna be rich and so so are we deciding what mushrooms to put on it or what background? 
No, I think um, I was just trying to decide whether or not to do it. But I oh. think we have time. I don't think anybody will say, don't do it. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, if you guys are all ready to leave, <laughs> I wouldn't get into it. But I am having fun. So I don't have amazing like wireage going on here. So these will have to pretty much be like the, the one suggestion mm -hmm. would be to have something under it, mm -hmm. under here, mm -hmm. so that the mirror doesn't reflect the lights back up. Oh, okay. I will bring the stab it around and have it at an angle. Plus they'll be able to see it better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let me get rid of my glue stick. Should we try the drill thing? I don't think I want to get into that with this um, setup right now. Not, probably not. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna glue it. Although that would be a really good way to go, probably. Okay, how's that? Uh, that's more, I mean, if you want to see yourself, but if you tilt it the other way. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so red. <laughs> If you tilt it the other way, then uh, I don't think anything will show. I can't tilt it the other way and work on it. I, I just mean like a, a slight incline. That's this, something thinner than the stabbing. Oh. Yeah. Like if you just put this under the edge. They can't really see me. I mean, it's your stream. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <laughs> If I put that, oh, if I just put, okay, let me scoot this back and it won't be so in your face. How's that? That's fine. Okay. Okay. I don't really have a plan. I was going to put this guy over here, like it's in there. What? <laughs> And then I was going to have these on top. Five's a nice number. And then, ooh, oh, I didn't put my cool little, oh, I have to do that. Okay, I'm just going to set them on there so I don't forget my cool little, um, these guys. Maybe one goes over here. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. All right, I'm going to set them on here so I don't forget. We'll come back to that. Okay, so I have these locks. I have these were made out of ribbon. How did, how did you get them to bunch up? I cut the ribbon and then I wove the thread through the bottom and pulled it tight. And then this is like... I don't know what I was thinking. It's a little bit busy, but it's cool. I'm going to try pulling some pieces apart instead of cutting it. Yeah, like that'll be, that'll be cool looking. And then we need a little piece. To go on this guy, like all smushed in kind of. You seriously cannot stab as soon as something's on something. Okay, let me stab this one on a little bit too. That way, when I glue it, like it already has one level of attachment. This is fun. Is there armature in that mushroom? Could mm -hmm. you could you have it like kind of grow up and out and up? Mm. Not quite that much. It's not long but, enough. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks cool. And this one's pretty underneath too. So that looks that does look cool. Oh, that's like stuck already. It's gonna stab it a little bit more. Now, these little babies, I think what I'm gonna need to do is take a decent piece of this, give it three little mushroom notches, and then like stick it over um, and help it hold these. And I, I think I like, I think I'm happy with this order. So that's gonna be, um, let me start with these. <laughs> Gonna be a little tricky and I'm just trying to decide if I want a needle felt or anything else I think there's enough going on in this piece <laughs> as a whole it doesn't need as much texture as the other one So I gotta be pretty sure about this because I don't wanna muck up my mirror with glue. Pulling that apart like I did worked well. It's like more fringy, you know? I think what makes it look more kind of natural is when it's really stuck to the wood, like so it really looks like it's growing on it, not just sitting on it. Give this one a little one of these guys. I probably could have sewn that on if I were planning ahead and not making a live tutorial. So we're gonna glue it and it's gonna be fine. Okay, now we're gonna do this one. I like that suggestion, Talbot. It's working, I think. So it's so cool because like this, making this, like already does so much of, mm. of that. All right, this somehow is like stuck in there. Oh, okay, I see. Which is a good thing. Let's, let's leave it there. This one's easier for you guys to see because it's a flat thing. So, oh yeah, I do have some purple, Laura. Don't worry, I have, look. Mm. So pretty, it's, it's, almost, it's almost the bronze um, color tones. Yeah, I have all these locks over here with really pretty colors in it. I don't know. This might have to go somewhere. That's beautiful. Diane was wondering the material of the uh, mirror. It's just wood, right? Mm, it, uh... it might not be as nice as wood. It might be like a resin, mm -hmm. like or some kind of composite yeah it's not a fancy <laughs> it's not a fancy thing uh. 
All right, so right now these purple locks are on hold. They're just kind of sitting there. All right, this is the tricky part, and it might not, it might be kind of not pretty for you guys for a minute while I figure out um, how to hold it up and everything. But I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna cut it here. This is gonna be on the front. Oh, it has a lot of purple. This is gonna be on the back. And I like the way that tapers off like that. And I'm gonna cut three little notches in this to go around my mushrooms. I'm just kind of guessing, as you can tell. And then I'm gonna do, I have to hold this up and I have to do a little bit of gluing and holding kind of at the same time. Okay, we'll see. Let me see what happens, Tom. But I apologize, you're not going to be able to see very well for a moment. All right, I think kind of off to the side like that. Okay, here's what we're going to do. You're going to hold those. I'm going to put the glue. I'm just going to smack <laughs> <laughs> on there. And I'm going to put that. That one. Thank you. This one I left like fluff on and um, it kind of looks like spores coming off. That was the goal anyway. Okay, then I'm going to take my Piece. Will you make those just a little bit deeper? Yeah. Another like half an inch or so. Thank you. You guys, I don't even know, like, Do you what, want to just hold this so then you can... What my concentration two? face looks like. Yes, thank you. Don't, you don't have to tell me. But I know I have it. I know I have one. Okay, tell that. I think that's going to do it. Nice. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to lay it down and start messing with it. That's exciting. Oh, I really like that. Now, once this is like more secure, um, oh, I love these little locks coming out of there. Then I'll be able to play with this a little bit better, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuck more. so you guys can see it. All right, someone say something entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys can see the camera. Can I see the camera? Uh, well, you'll definitely be able to see my yellow shirt. <laughs> oh, funny. The atrocities of working with mirrors. I like that.
Tammy says, give me a price so I can buy your mirror. Aww. We are um, thinking about having an auction. Just haven't quite figured out how and when and all that good stuff. Okay, this needs some of these. This is like all those little things that we give away or we save or we, um, this project is for all of those things. Little pieces of silk, embroidery thread, um, Oh, I have these. Oh, this one needs feathers. Like I said, this one's a little over the top. Definitely need to go for it. And these feathers are, I don't remember if they're pheasant, but they have the brown has the sage green and some of the purple in it. Um, oh, Tammy's also asking if we would ever have a class to make the blankets. I mean, that's that's an in-person only. Yeah, the blankets, on, I don't plan on teaching. The blankets are not going to be um, like a s sort of curriculum kind of thing. They're, I'm, in, I'm hoping for them to be um, the very unique, you know, thing on the market and to, yeah, just to market them and sell them. Um, also because it, um, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, <laughs> a lot of material, a lot of equipment. So, but yes, thank you. It's, they're, they're really fun. Really, really fun. I, I came in early today and I was like, I want to make a, um, a poncho. <laughs> so I used a different weight, um, like more of a garment weight and started laying it out, but it's a big experiment. So I don't know. I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um, but it's definitely an experimental phase. Uh, so there are also some questions about how, I guess, if we show examples of the other mushrooms, how they're attached. Mm -hmm. Oh, the same way, just wire and glue. Yeah. Yeah. Just I wherever I can, I, um, you know, if I can, I wrap a wire around something or make a nice um, little sort of circular base in it, which we go over in the. Um, um, in the tutorial and if you also another like this one I know is just wrapped right around the branch um, you could wrap your mushroom wire roots with wool twist them into a nice base shape and then needle felt either pre felt or something right on top of that and then that gives you kind of an automatic base or yeah blanket base this one is that um, is the overhead better probably yeah this one is the um i was telling you about making a log so that's just a big chunk of wool with yarn wrapped around it and then i wired the mushroom to that and then um i i actually was able to needle felt this one quite a bit because it's so much wool but um yeah that's how that one was done i think you know enjoy I just enjoyed every aspect of this. I enjoyed making the mushrooms. I enjoyed um, uh, with the wet felting, then making the mushrooms, sorry, and then finding 
you know, going out and yard sailing and goodwill and stuff to find things to build on, uh, making the little, you know, finding pieces of ribbon. And then once you have your piles of stuff, this part, as you saw, I did this in what, 15 minutes? Like it does not, it doesn't take long. It's the, it's all the gathering and making beforehand. Um, so this is starting to stick pretty well now. Hold it up. I do want to make sure that my mushrooms are as I want them because once the power pole uh, or power text dries, like that's it. You don't get, you don't get another chance really. This one has some, um, we had soft fruit nips by mistake. Soft fruit is one of my favorite colors. It, to me, that's red done right because I'm not a red person. And um, so this one has the soft fruit nips in it. Oh, I really like that. I'm very happy with that. Is there anything you guys, I mean, I might play with this a little bit more, but I'm well, um, pretty happy with that. There were some requests to see like the mermaid up close. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, also, any blankets if you wanted to show? Sure, I'll show off some blankets. Absolutely, I love to show off my blankets. <laughs> Is there a way that we can put this? I know there were um, some little easels over there uh, on top of that. Yeah, I know one I can get. Okay, all right. Or I could just well. I'll just hold it and wait for Tom. <laughs> this was fun. It's And then when I make some, I just want to keep making more. <laughs> just want to make more. Preparing for all of this, thanks Talbot, was really fun for me. That's perfect. Yay. Okay. Absolutely. Blankets, mermaid, my pleasure. We had the mermaid out um, for one of our examples for the female figure because she has the she has the yarn hair. The mermaid, the mermaid was a um, was a felt along, and it was an elaborate multi <laughs> multi meeting felt along, and but a little bit weird because I I didn't do her face. I just didn't feel like I could do maybe a handle the pressure. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. But we wet felted the tail um, and we made the armature and we made the figure. And then, um, yeah, and then we and then we put it all together. So that is out there. It's a lot of fun. It's a it's. Wet felting the mermaid tail and then, or something like the dragon, if you guys have, um, haven't have taken the dragon course yet, is a lot of fun. It's really, really cool to just have a little bit of a free-for-all with your texture and your color and it doesn't have to look like anything specific. It can be whatever comes out of your imagination. So yeah, that was a fun, a fun project. And I will step away for one second and grab grab a few blankets. She's just got to kind of hang on up there. I grabbed a random, random pile. <laughs> um, they have, show. They have a finished, a finished edge on the short, the short edge, the two short edges, and then on the long edges, I try to create. Um, a silk ribbon. 
And then, thanks, Todd. Are we just Here still you go. showing? There you go. We'll go from the front. Okay. Yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, and then they're like throw size. Um, you know, not quite twin bed size, but definitely generous, <laughs> generous throw. And then they have hand spun um, on them. So they're very luxurious, very warm. Um, every single one is totally different. No two are anywhere near the same. I couldn't make them the same if I tried, kind of like needle felting. And um, I have a lot of fun picking out picking out colors and laying out materials and choosing the right choosing the right yarn and such. And they all get their own, you know, this one is a little more with um, a little lighter, maybe more like sunroom <laughs> this one's super colorful so yeah some are like more playful some are very sophisticated color palettes this one's definitely on the playful side so thanks Talbot. Mm -hmm. so that is the blankets mess with this for a second. I want to feel like I want this coming forward a little bit more. There we go. Oh, I was going to decide. I want to put these little, little guys on real quick. Any questions or anything? They're just wondering what the like the cost would be, but I don't yeah. think we have a. Um, I don't. They're gonna. I I debuted them at the open house and at a local show here recently. Um, these are still sort of prototypes, um, but they'll be in the two fifty to three fifty range, depending on the size and and complexity of them. Um, somewhere around there, yeah. Not totally. Not totally definitive yet. Do you want to divulge how you make them? I do not. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually not allowed. Like, if I decide to um, register the process, then... Hmm. I guess this wants to be its own little cluster over here. If you do get some power pole onto your project where you don't want it, you can dab at it with like a wet towel, but it does dry clear. So it's not, it's not like a major, major problem. Yeah, the blankets are kind of like, you know, not going to be, they'll be a part of my company, but it's not really like, I mean, you guys, if anyone is interested, like you will be the first to know, <laughs> but I'm hoping to market sort of outside of our current, um, current realm. We'll see what happens. It's, I'm enjoying it no matter what, or no matter Sort of no matter how it goes, but okay, I play, played with that one a little bit. I always have, I always have big plans, whether, <laughs> whether they, whether they work out or not, uh, is another story. What else? Do you want to show off ones that you've already done? Sure. In uh, more detail? Sure. 
Is um, overhead better or forward? Uh, overhead. Okay. So this one, this is a, I think it's actually metal. It kind of looks like concrete, but it's metal. And this was an early one. <laughs> um, so I kept it simple. Just kind of a cute little thing. Could be a paperweight. <laughs> it could sit anywhere. But when I, so now when I look at this, I, you know, I do kind of like the clustered look of this, but I would definitely stick a few more naps on there because it looks a little too um, cut edge to me. There's, I'm going to pass that one back to you and I can reach this one. And this one is a piece of bark. Um, it's actually, it's actually like quite delicate because it's hollow. Um, and this little guy's just sitting there. But I wanted to keep most of the bark texture and just have have the um, this texture sort of blend into it. I like that one a lot. Ooh, will any blankets be for sale by Christmas? Um. Oh yeah, I have about a dozen, so I can. Um, if, if we do the auction, I probably would put them into the auction. And, um, if not, I can just find a way to list them. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a wonderful idea. They're, um, they are, um, they can be machine washed, which is nice. I mean, you don't want to do it regularly, but, um, yeah, and I've had some for two years now in my house <laughs> with pets, so I feel like I have sort of established, you know, how they hold up and how they handle that kind of um, home life. This one is very simple, weird, wacky stick. I just wrapped, I just wrapped this wire right on around and then hit it a little bit with a little bit of little bit of texture and this one I can I can reach it thanks and then this one is like a big old chunky thing um, kind of I would do things a little differently but I like how how vivid it is and it's very it's more playful so it's a nice it's a nice little spot for a gnome to sit with a mouse or something like that so that one's a little more playful to me, I guess. And sometimes it wants to sit up and sometimes it wants to sit back. So, and then, uh, yeah, I've made a few other ones and I have, um, I still have lots of, um, pieces of wood and stuff to, stuff to play with. <laughs> uh, I think we just left all the wood outside that wasn't already kind of dry. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't treat the wood in any way. This piece that I got from a resale shop, I feel like is somehow treated somehow. Um, it's almost like a, I don't know, sort of like a, I don't Maybe know what I'm going to say. Yeah. I don't know what's on there. Um, but I, I, yeah, someone asked me, have her pull the whole thing it totally it, I think it would change the look of it and if it's stable and then I'm not too worried about I mean I've had that piece of bark for probably about eight years <laughs> so it's you know I don't feel like it's gonna break down or anything like that oh, one more request for the pin cushion oh okay uh... okay yeah the pin cushion's adorable I bought this box at a local resale place, the kind of place that um, they buy like entire households and then and then sell everything. And I sort of made it so that, oh look, I've mixed my needles up now, but I made it so that um, on the little log is where I'm putting my fine, my fine needles. And then um, down here is where I'm putting my, my coarser needles. Cause that's how I, that's how I tell the difference. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun.
Um, trying to think if there's any other fiber news. Um, yeah, the drop spindles are listed, right? I think the drop spindles are listed. Are done, so yeah, I, I think assume. pretty sure yeah. we got them listed. Um, having, I'm having fun with the drop spindle, and there's a lot you can do with it. It's definitely not as fast, I guess, or um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Have as much potential as a as a big old spinning wheel, but. I've made a lot of yarn on drop spindles and there's definitely a lot that you can do with it. And I'm learning how to, it's not that hard to ply. So if you want something chunkier, you can ply it. And um, I will show, I will show all of that for sure. And the blending board, I'm sorry, I have fuzz in my mouth. Once we get the blending board, the blending board is an awesome way to use up those all those little bits and pieces that you guys might have been accumulating and um and then you can make roll legs or you can spin um right from your bat like just pull pieces off and and start drafting and spinning so hopefully that won't be too much longer and one real advantage of the drop spindle is you can make really small batches of something yeah it's very satisfying it's like if you just need a small little accent for a piece yes. you're working on it's like okay well I'll just take a few yep. different fiber colors and you're done absolutely you drag out the spinning wheel that's a good point it is very good for that and you can do it while you're watching tv or just i don't know it's it's real it's a relaxing thing to do when you're not cursing it um but you'll get it and it is a great way to if you do think you want to start spinning um, it's a great way to start getting the feel for drafting fiber and, and how spinning works. As soon as, as soon as the twist, I had one, is it sitting on the table over there? I had some roll eggs and, um, this yeah, I am going to spin that for a blanket or the end of the big table. Like you took pictures of it. Mm -mm. No, I did something with it. It's okay. It's okay. I'll find it. Um, as soon as when you're drafting, you want to keep the spindle spinning. If you let the twist get past your fingers, then you're kind of in trouble because it's <laughs> it starts to twist. And it's the same way with the um, with the spinning wheel. So it's a good way to start to learn how that feels. Let me just take a look real quick. I was taking pictures, so I had it all put away. But these are roll eggs that I made on the blending board. This one was the one I was just spinning from. And so you can see it's the sheet off the blending board like rolled up and there's a way to do it and it's, it's not that hard and I can show you. And then you won't be able to see um, that's all right. No, because I'm getting ready to pull away from there because they won't be able to see the spindle dropping. But um, you can build up a little twist and then get it to go into your. But yeah, it just takes it just takes a little practice. And sometimes I can do something that I just speed right along with, and sometimes I struggle a little bit more with it. And I think I'm a weirdo, and I spun one way, and then I wrapped it on here the other way, which probably isn't good. And it might be part of the reason that my spindle wants to keep going the other direction. Oh, I might have rewrapped it. Oh. Because I had to put it back on. 
after I took photos. Oh. So it was me. Oh, okay. Because I did. I was very, I thought I was pretty conscientious about keeping my spin the right way. But it does take a little bit of, you do have to think about it a little bit. All right. So if we rewrapped it. Oh my gosh. How did you do that? What do you mean? Did you just pull it all off? Yeah, take the photo. I hope you guys have a drink. Oh, well, what I should do is do this. I'm just curious now to see if it works better once it's wrapped the same way that I'm spinning. You know what I mean? I got a lot of yarn. <laughs> so I can I could make a a ball out of this and then um and then ply each end together and get it th twice as thick. So getting a little bit kind of closer to more of a chunky art yarn which you might want once in a while. All right, we're close to the end. Oh wait, okay, yeah, so I was spinning it this way. There we go. And man, there's some, this is a very basic drop spindle. But if you get into it, there's some beautiful drop spindles out there. It's like another, it's like another thing to to collect, you know. Are there any questions or anything? Uh, the mermaid's hair. How did was that with a? Oh. Oh, I think the mermaid's hair. I'm pretty sure I bought that yarn from somebody, but it is a hand spun. Will you grab the, um, there's a yarn, and I've showed it before, but I'll just show them now, on the back of the chair that Jennifer usually sits in. Yes. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. I mean, you had some really nice ones like this that you sold. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I can see here. Let me let me show. You. Sorry, Tabitha. <laughs> I had to get that on there. This was um, this was on my on my spinning wheel, but yeah, this one is like super, super awesome. It's so weighty, like it's so heavy, and I don't know. You just wanna you just wanna like wear it. Okay, so now I just want to see if when I spin, if it's stay if it's easier to. It does have a lot of energy to it. Yeah, that's going a little better. And the twist is interesting because you know how easily a roving pulls apart, you know, and you're just like, ugh. But as soon as you twist something, man, you cannot, it is strong, you cannot pull it apart. And that's the whole concept behind making yarn and rope and anything else fiber related. So anyway, it's a lot of fun. And you can just like have it around and pick it up and do some spinning any old time. All right, let's see if there's any questions and then we will wrap her up. Wind her down. Jan Scott says you can roll the spindle on your thigh to increase the speed. Mm. Yeah, I'd you can just see a video. Yeah, just get a flick it on your thigh. <laughs> <sighs> Yes, <laughs> it's a slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> the draft spindle is the is the gateway, the gateway to many spinning wheels. <laughs> It's such a satisfying thing to do. If only I knitted or crocheted, then I would have even more reason. But um, I have fun making yarn anyway. And I am using it on the blanket. So that that does give me um, a good reason. You want, will you pass me the bat? I'll just show them that big bat. So I was laying out a blanket and I didn't have a yarn that I liked. So I put together some fiber. So I'm going to spin this. <laughs> it's like... I don't know, it's gotta be six ounces or so. I'm gonna spin that next. It's got uh, lots of silk and mohair, all kinds of all kinds of stuff in it. Actually, it came from the same, a lot of it came from this batch that I told you about, the bad batch of um, fiber art bundle. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I am fiber temptress. That's funny. <sighs> I've been called many things. Many things. All right. Well, thank you all so much. I am looking forward to seeing what you make with your fiber fairy fiber and the mushroom tutorial and the felt along. Um, it's going to be, I'm sure, all kinds of cool things are going to crop up because you guys always take what take what I do and then put another twist on it that um, it's always fun to see that yeah after <laughs> all these years I don't tire of seeing people's projects yeah like, I don't either you never never, never know what's going to show up there I don't tire of it I don't tire of making things with wool or discovering new ways to use it or you know yeah dreaming up new territory so as long as you guys are having fun and interested we will be here <laughs> we will be here so all right thank you all so much i hope you have a great uh rest of your weekend and I will see you next. We don't have any fiber fairies um, planned for the fall because we have cyber or our fiber Monday. I want to say it's the 21st. I don't have a calendar in front of me. Um, it's in November. And then our end, big end of the year sale, we've got um, the commission webinar, November 10th. We just linked that in the newsletter. I'm not sure if it made it onto the website yet, but I will ask Kyla if it would go onto the website. And um, and then possibly an auction and, you know, or some other, if we um, can do a little live stream with the drop spindle, that would be really fun. So I'll find a way to see you again live in sometime in the, in, in, during the holidays for sure. Um, I can't go, I can't go two months without that. So, um, <laughs> thank you all. Have a great weekend. Can't wait to see what you make. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> um, I'm just going to answer this question real yep. quick. 2% was asking how many hours a day you usually spend doing craft oh and it's like it depends so much on the project yeah so. yeah I, for for a while there when i was only needle felting and i wasn't running serafina i was spending six to eight hours a day but now i spend a lot of time on my laptop like managing i don't even know what i'm doing on my what am i doing on my laptop we're making listings we're answering questions we're tweaking the website we're doing social media um but it is nice to have a day that I come in and I just make things. I really like those days. Yeah, hard one to answer. Yes. All right. Well, now we're really saying.